Hi, and welcome back to Beans and Bezels. I talk a lot about affordable watches and good automatic watches that are budget friendly, so it shouldn't have taken me this long to get to reviewing a Seiko watch, as they are arguably one of the most popular watch brands today. Before we get into this, I should make it known that I do like the brand. The second nice watch that I ever owned was a Seiko Premier Kinetic Perpetual Calendar, and I wore that watch every day for about three years. And even 10 years later, that watch has held up nicely. At some point in the last couple of years, I did give Seiko another shot and bought an SKX009. I was not a fan and ended up modding it and selling that watch after a couple of weeks. So I took my time to decide which Seiko watch I would like to feature here first. I decided I'd like to avoid their divers because they're often prone to quality control issues like bezel and chaptering misalignment. So I was on the lookout for one of their presage pieces instead. I was fortunate enough that the same kind friend that loaned me his Zin 104 also owned a cocktail time Blue Moon, and he was willing to loan me this one to check out too. So here we are, and while I do have mixed opinions about the brand today, I will attempt to be as objective as possible. This watch has a list price of 450 US dollars, but can be found for around 350. Let's check it out. The case measures 40 and a half millimeters in diameter, 47 millimeters from lug to lug, and 12 millimeters in height. The entire case is high polished stainless steel and the finishing is very good. I like the simple circular case shape with the slim but sporty lugs. There is a very comfortable and well proportioned sign crown at the 3 o'clock position. The ridges on the crown are excellent and there isn't any crown or stem wobble. No complaints here whatsoever. According to my guesstimation, at least 1.5mm of that 12mm height is occupied by the hard lex glass that sits upon the polished bezel. I don't want to make this a hard lex versus sapphire crystal debate, but I'll just say that I personally believe that this should have had a sapphire crystal instead. The crystal has some distortion at the edges, but this adds some character to the watch without making it difficult to read. Flipping it over, you have a screw down case pack that gives you a glimpse of the underwhelming but effective 4R35B movement. The crown does not screw into the case and this watch is rated for up to 50 meters of water resistance, which is reasonable for this category of watch. The dial is beautifully designed, and if there's one thing that Seiko has mastered over the years, it's designing some of the best looking dials in the business. The cocktail time lineup have similar dial textures, but different colors. This is the blue moon variant with the blue radial gradient. There's a neatly printed outer marker ring with five small ticks between every two larger minute or second ticks. Moving inward, you then have a set of high polished stainless steel hour indices that have sharp angular surfaces that play with light beautifully. While these look amazing from a distance, closer inspection reveals very disappointing quality control. Almost all the indices have finishing irregularities, dirt, and one of them even had a gouged surface. This is where someone says, but it's only a $350 mass manufactured watch. And this is where I get to say to them, so what? A lot of micro brands are delivering exponentially better finishing for the same price. And if someone is going to spend $350 of their hard earned money, I'd like for them to get the best possible watch for their money. And this dial is not the best you can get for $350. The 3 o'clock hour index is abruptly ended to make room for the frame date window. The date window has a black wheel and white text. I think this date wheel does a good job of staying inconspicuous, but once again the finishing on and around this window leaves room for improvement. The hands are beautifully designed Dauphine style high polished stainless steel hands. I couldn't think of a more perfect handset for this dial. The seconds hand and minute hands fall short of reaching the minute and seconds track, but this is a dress watch so that's completely fine by me. The finishing on the hands is better than the indices but not close to being perfect either with some scratches and surface irregularities. Imperfections aside, you are getting one of the best looking dials in the market. The base of this dial is stunning and the texture and color is just excellent. The sunray style ridges are well finished and the blue gradient is stunning to look at. Watch enthusiasts complain about Seiko bracelets a lot. This goes all the way up the ladder through the Prospects line and into Grand Seiko as well. That said, for $350, this bracelet is actually quite nice. The links are well machined and polished, with two center links being high polished and the rest brushed. The butterfly clasp seems partially pressed and partially milled. The pressed pieces feel a bit flimsy, but no complaints for the price point. The links are pushpin based, which is okay too, for the price. The end links are hollow, which was a bit disappointing, and the end link and case fitment was quite poor. There is about half a millimeter of horizontal wiggle, which is unacceptable now that $350 micro brands can do this without any noticeable wiggle. The vertical fitment is perfect though. This watch uses Seiko's 4R35B movement, which I believe is the latest in the 4R35 movement family. I'm not a Seiko expert, but I also believe that this movement is the Seiko only version of the NH35 that we're also fond of here in the microbrand universe. I logged the accuracy of this watch over a 36 hour period and observed roughly minus 9 seconds per day. This is within their plus 45 to minus 35 seconds per day operating range, so I'd say it's well regulated too. 
These movements are known to be quite polarizing, and I try to avoid NH35s as much as possible for my own collection. But there's no denying that incredible scale at which these movements are being produced and how they've almost completely taken over the affordable automatic watch market. While I don't have a pr problem with the accuracy of this movement, I think the finishing is quite disappointing on this particular piece. There's tons of small scratch marks and micro debris scra scattered all around the movement, and it just doesn't live up to the fantastic Japanese quality control that we hear about. Again, I am aware how much this watch costs, but if you're going to put an exhibition window on it, I expect better. This watch is very comfortable though, on my six and a quarter inch wrist. This is essentially a dress watch, so it is reasonable to expect that it will be slim, sit low on the wrist and not be too large in diameter. The case is 40.5mm in diameter, 47mm from lug to lug and 12mm tall. The 12mm height is a bit on the tall end of the spectrum for a simple dress watch like this, but Seiko movements are thicker than their Miyota counterparts, so I suppose this is to be expected. This doesn't wear like most 12mm tall watches though, so you don't have to be worried about the height too much. It is very possible that I've upset a few Seiko fans with this review, but I wanted to review one of these watches in the same manner I would any other watch that comes to me. That said, a lot of the value that Seiko delivers goes beyond just one particular watch and it's less than ideal finishing. They have a history of building reliable movements, a massive network of watch technicians who are well versed in regulating and maintaining these watches, and also a global retail network like no other. But when you objectively put these watches against others in their price range, it is easy to see that these watches may not, in fact, be the most incredible watches your money can buy. For good reasons, Seiko has developed a reputation of making watches that are worth more than they cost, and in many cases I do agree. But with the rapidly growing microbrand watch market, a lot of incredible watches are flooding the market that can hold their ground against watches like these, and in many cases outshine them completely. In this category of sub $400 dressy watches, I would not hesitate to propose the Vario Empire and the Mitch Mason Chronicle as worthy contenders. Once again, thanks for watching and be sure to read the full length review in the link below.